Welcome back everyone. Let's start our discussion on routing on Azure by covering some of the big picture routing concepts. We are going to start off with the fundamentals of how routing works in general. And then moving on to Azure, we are going to discuss the different route types available, the components of those route types, and the next hop types, which are some key components that we're going to expand upon a little bit later on. So starting off with the high level basics, what exactly is routing from a big picture or basic perspective? The easiest way to describe it network routing is the process of selecting a path across one or more networks from a source location to a destination location. Or in other words, a computer needs to ask, what is my destination and how exactly do I get there? And also, what is the most efficient route to my destination wherever that is at? Now, be aware that network routing doesn't only apply across multiple networks. It also includes routing between subnetworks and a parent network, as well as going to other networks as well. Now, shifting our attention to Azure, Azure uses what's known as software-defined networking to manage routes, which means that unlike traditional networks, we really don't have any hardware limitations that we have to worry about. Rather, all of our route configuration or route tables are defined in software without having to worry about the hardware management aspect, which of course makes our jobs a good bit easier. Moving into the Azure component of this discussion, there are two main types of routes that we are going to interact with that you need to be aware of. They are system or default routes. In other words, default routes that are automatically created when you create a network or different networking services. And we also have user-defined routes, also known as custom routes. Let's go ahead and unpack those in a bit more detail, starting with system or default routes. System routes are default routes, and the terms can be mostly interchangeable. The main thing to recognize is that these are routes that are automatically created for you on your behalf. You, the end user, do not create system routes. Rather, they are automatically created for you, and you cannot also delete or modify those routes as well. With that in mind, some default routes can be overwritten by custom routes, and we'll talk more about that here in just a little bit. Some common default routes to be aware of are routes to each individual subnet within a virtual network. A virtual network address prefix will be a route. Any traffic that goes outside of the virtual network to the public internet will also have its own route. And routes that are dropped on purpose will also be typical default routes as well. In addition to your common default routes, if you use other Azure networking services, they can automatically create some default or system routes for you as well, such as virtual network peering, creating a virtual network gateway, and implementing the service endpoint service will also automatically create routes for you as well. And of course, we're going to talk more about these services a little bit later on in this course. Our other Azure routing type that we are going to talk about, and we're going to talk more about it in the next lesson, is known as user-defined routing. User-defined routing are custom routes that you create, modify, and delete. Now, from a quick terminology perspective, the terms user-defined routes and custom routes are completely interchangeable. In fact, Azure's own documentation will often mix and match those terms as well, so user-defined routes are also custom routes and vice versa. For now, just realize that custom routes are custom route tables that you create, which you will then link to one or more subnets. And as we mentioned earlier, though you cannot delete or modify default routes, you can override those routes with custom routes which you'll be used instead. A typical scenario will be routing internet-bound traffic not just to the internet itself, but instead redirecting it through the Azure Firewall service. And we're going to talk a lot more about custom routes in the next lesson in a lot more detail. Next, I want to shift our focus to breaking down the main components of your typical routes on Azure that you will need to be familiar with. From our example to the right, our first component is a source. The source designates what type of route we are working with. And those two types are a default route, which is, again, the ones you cannot create, modify, or delete. And we also have our user routes, which are custom, which we have full control over. The other component is the address prefix, which designates where this route is sending network traffic to, or in other words, the route destination. Or in other words, going back to our initial definition of routing, it is the component that designates where am I going. And our other route component is the next hop type, which is the next waypoint or destination our route is going to. Or once again, going back to our definition, how do I get there? So again, to break that down, the address prefix is the destination we are going to, the where am I going? And the next hop type is how do I get there? Speaking of which, let's break down the different next hop types that are available on Azure. Once again, it is the how do I get there question. And there are five primary hop types that you need to be familiar with. 
Our first hop type is a virtual network. The virtual network next hop manages wraps between subnets and the same virtual network. In other words, subnet A needs to be able to route traffic to subnet B. The virtual network hop type is the one that manages that. Next hop type is the internet hop type. In other words, all outbound to the internet traffic. And the address prefix that is used for the internet hop type is 0000/0, also sometimes referred to as all zeros, and it's commonly referred to as a catch-all address that does not include any other specified routes in your network. With that in mind, the default internet route, in other words, the one that is automatically created for you, will by default send all internet-bound traffic or all zeros traffic directly to the public internet, although this can be overridden with custom routes, and once again, we'll talk more about that later. Our next route type is simply referred to as none. Yes, you read that right, it's just called none. The none hop type will drop traffic that is sent to reserved IP ranges, of which Azure designates a few default ranges it will drop. Overall, you can kind of think of the none hop type as a black hole in which traffic sent to this address range will simply be dropped and the network request just goes away. One common use for user-defined networks with the none hop type is to manage or restrict traffic between different subnets. In other words, if a subnet is set as a none hop type for traffic from another subnet or another network, that traffic will be simply dropped and it will have nowhere to go. Our next hop type is that of a virtual network gateway, which is often used for VPN and express route. That is both a default route type created for you once you use a virtual network gateway, and you can create some custom routes as well. And our last one is that of a virtual appliance in which you set up and configure a virtual machine that is acting as a network appliance, like a customer supplied firewall, for example. With that, that's going to wrap up our discussion on our initial conceptual overview of working with routes on Azure. We have quite a bit more ground to cover to unpack some of these previous concepts. For now, let's quickly review our key takeaways before we move on to our next lesson. We start off with a high level overview of routing fundamentals, which answer the question, where am I going and how do I get there? We then broke down the two main route types on Azure, which include default routes and user-defined or custom routes. We reviewed the route components in an Azure route, which include the source, the address prefix, and the next hop type. And we also broke down the primary hop types available, which answer the question, how do I get there? Which include the virtual network hop type, internet, none hop type, virtual network gateway, and virtual appliance. Once again, quite a bit more ground to cover. Our next lesson is going to focus specifically on user-defined or custom routes. Let's now go ahead and move on to the next lesson and take a look.